Hello, everyone, and welcome to Simply Spirit. Today, I have an amazing person with me. She is my sister from another mister, and she's also an herbalist. She is a Reiki master teacher. She's an empath, and she also makes some amazing products. So please welcome Missy Foist. Oh, Yay. thank you. Yay. You're <laughs> so welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. And so now that you're here, I can't wait for you to share all about your journey, all about the products that you have, because I know they're super amazing. I've used some of them and yes, you have. So I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah. why don't you start out by telling us about who you are, you know, what got you into um, different herbs and everything else. So, so I basically, I grew up with them, you know, we had a mom that uh, just had everything. We hardly ever went to the doctor, you know, it's like we, if we had the sniffles or whatever, you know, um, a common cold type thing. It was, you know, fenugreek tea, slippery elm. I mean, we just did, you know, the home remedies. Um, I don't know how many times I've drank, uh, you know, cider vinegar and lemon water and, you know, to soothe the sore throat or, mm -hmm. you know, so we grew up with it. Like I wouldn't, I could count on one hand how many times I've been to the doctor as a child. So it's like, you know, we just grew up with it. That's, that's what we knew, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You think so, back on it and it's like, I see all these, you know, young moms and I, there's nothing against Western medicine. Let me just say that there's nothing against it, but I feel like that we need to empower our healthcare. Mm -hmm. Like we need to embrace Western medicine, but don't forget where that came from. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. But yeah, we grew up with it. It was, it was great. So we have um, someone, she goes by, or this person goes by a special power it says, hi, all excited about this guest. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, like that was there right when we went live. So I'm super excited. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, so my question is, you grew up with that. So did you yes. carry that forward with your own kids? And do they carry that forward with theirs? They do to a certain degree. I mean, okay. So I think that the generation that we have, our children, okay. Um, even though we worked with them when they were younger and stuff, they have like the outside influence, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that also affects what they think they need to do, what the right thing is to do right. with their children. Right. So I still get, my kids ask me questions, you know, Hey mom, this is going on. What do you suggest I do? You know, that type of thing, which I did that with my mom, with my kids, right. you know? So that's the norm, right? Mm -hmm. What seems to be what the, the generation is lacking is that confidence that what mom said it will work it will help don't discount western medicine not saying that mm -hmm. but remember that if things get worse then contact that professional but try something simple first because sometimes simple is best mm -hmm. absolutely you know? i agree with that yeah. I agree. So yeah. now, I mean, now you were, you grew up with all of this stuff and you've used it yourself. So how did that transition from you going from using it to deciding, Hey, I want to become an herbalist. I mean, was that something that you always wanted to do or did that come <laughs> later on in life? I mean, how did that come about? I did not. Okay. Okay. Um, because I had mom, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, I had mom to rely on, you know, if, if something was going on, pick up that phone, call mom. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, everything changed Christmas morning of 2015. Um, mom was gone. So at that point, my brother and I, um, 
about a month or so later, her sister passed away Mm -hmm. and we had talked, you know, my brother and I had talked several times about, you know, mom stuff, even when we were down there, you know, for the funeral and stuff in Oklahoma and was, you know, what do we, what do we do? What do we do about, you know, mom's legacy? You know, I have lotions here, you know, that mom made. I had teas that are still in my cabinet, you know, that I drink, you know, that she, she made me. Um, And so we stopped to think about, you know, we don't want that lost. You know, I don't want that lost. And he was on the same page as me. Now he wasn't really saying it. Okay. We're traveling to Texas for my aunt's funeral. He's not really saying a a whole lot other than nodding his head. And yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I go, you know, I don't know what you're thinking. And he goes, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And I'm like, I don't know. What are you thinking? (laughs) And he's like, (laughs) He goes, I think we need to do something with mom's stuff. I think we need to carry on mom's stuff. And I go, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> who's, ma- who's making this stuff, you know? And he goes, well, I thought you were. And I go, I don't know the first thing about this. I have never made lotion in my entire life. Mm-hmm. I have no idea about mixing you know, oils. I have no idea about mixing herbs. I mean, I don't know anything about this. How am I supposed to do this? And he goes, I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out. Mom has to have recipes, right? Mom Mm -hmm. has to have this stuff. We just need to figure out where it's at. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're driving a little more and Uh he goes, are you, are you with me? Are you on the same page? And I go, I, I think I am like, I'm hearing, I can hear my mom, right? I can just hear it going, you can do this. Mm -hmm. I have faith in you both. You can do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we kept thinking more and more about it. Well, then we went down, we did the funeral for my aunt and we visited with family and we have the long trip back. Right. And he get, and out of the blue, we're like, you know, what typical road trips are like, right? You've got the radio playing, you're jamming out to some music. I'm checking my (laughs) phone. I'm texting my family. I'm on my way home. And out of the blue, he's like, Hey, did you think any more about that? What? About what? (laughs) And he goes, (laughs) did you think any more about doing mom's stuff? And I said, I've done nothing but think about it. Right. And he goes, I I really think we need to do it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, are you in? I'm in if you're in. And that's when we just decided we're in. We're we're doing this. So I got a hold of my stepfather. I found out if he could find any of her recipes at all. And then I just started researching. I reached out to a cousin of mine who makes lotion. Her and her daughters make lotion and soap. And I said, okay, I need help. I need to figure out how I'm supposed to do this. And literally, I started my own class of lotion 101. (laughs) I took her (laughs) recipe and literally had to figure out how to make it. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I made the first lotion and I'm in the kitchen and I've got all these oils over here Mm -hmm. and I've got my big bowl on my double boiler over here. And I take a deep breath and I'm like, okay, I got, I got to mix this stuff. (laughs) So I'm looking at the recipe and I'm going, okay, so I'm going to start with this and I have to remember, I can't put the oils in until a certain temperature, Uh the essential oils. And I have to remember, you know, so I got all of this going, you know, 90 miles an hour, just spinning. Right. And I haven't put the first thing in the bowl and I'm like, okay, I'm just doing this. And so I just start and I start putting it together and I can literally hear my mom, you got this. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. I got this. I'm going to do it. So two weeks later, I text our, uh, all of our kids. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have to be at my house on this day. I'm making food and I need your help. Text my brother and his wife. And I said, making food. I need you here this day. Okay. So I made our ease lotion, which is 
um, a pain relief lotion, has nine essential oils in it, and it helps with muscle pain and joint pain. And I use it daily. Mm -hmm. um, so I still had a bottle of mom's lotion and I'm smelling hers and I'm smelling mine. And I'm like, I think they smell the same. <laughs> I'm using hers on one leg and I use hers on another leg. And I'm like, okay, it's doing the same thing. Maybe I got this. So everybody came to the house and literally we put some of mom's lotion on one side of a paper plate, some of the lotion I made on one side of the paper plate, didn't tell anybody which one was which, mm -hmm. and they had to figure it out. And it was kind of a toss up. Like some of them figured out what was mom's, some of them figured out what was mine but they were so comparable. It was hard for them to tell. And I knew I did it. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest relief. I think I ever had was that first time I did it and it turned out. Okay. It yeah. wasn't, a, it wasn't a horrible flop. I remember, I remember you calling me and being like, she doesn't have measurements on anything. <laughs> she didn't. It was, oh my gosh. Yes. It was. You're like, no, no I do. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I remember calling you and saying, look, there's ounces of this and drops of that, but doesn't tell me how to mix it. There's no directions on what to do with this stuff. And yeah, yeah, I but mom those. knew it. I mean, it yeah. was all up here. She right. just didn't write it down. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, we had several phone calls. We've oh had my very, gosh. We've had a lot of conversations. Since oh my day. gosh. From yeah. <laughs> bouncing yeah. back My ideas. poor cousins. I mean, my <laughs> poor cousins. She, <laughs> I don't know how many times I called her, texting mm -hmm. her, you know, and everything going, okay, is this the same thing? You know, you're looking up you know, these ingredients mm -hmm. and some of them she had, some of them we did, couldn't find. So then I had to research and find my own and, you know, figure out what company was best, was able to get um, some basic information of places that she ordered stuff because she was very diligent on making sure that organic was organic, mm -hmm. that these lotions were vegan that they were not, you know, animal products. Um, she wanted it as much plant-based as possible. Absolutely. And I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. The more I have done this over the years, she's been gone now. It'll be six years this year, which is so hard to believe. Yeah. But in the six years, we have um, figured out like so much that we just didn't know six years ago. Yeah. And um, yeah, so... I wished I had picked her brain more, you know, but never thought that I would be doing this, but she knew it. I Absolutely. remember. Yeah, she knew it because we, I remember a conversation we had of, you know, Missy, you need to be doing this. This is what you need to be doing. Oh, mom, you know, why do I need to do this? I have you. I'm not going to be here forever. And, uh, yeah, it was shorter than we thought it was going to be. That's for sure. <laughs> right. So do you think that was your mom who was kind of, you know, putting that in your brother's ear, so to speak, that, hey, she'll listen to you. She's not going to hear. She's not going to listen to it from anybody else. You know, did oh, yeah. you realize that you oh, would listen yeah. to Matt and you wouldn't listen to anybody else at that point? I think so. I think so. I mean, I think that if you know, even if my cousin had come, you know, to me and said, you know, you really need to carry on what your mom was doing. Mm -hmm. I think I probably would have went, oh yeah, you know, you're probably, I don't know, that's possible. But having those conversations with Matt, I mean, a lot happens when you're in a closed vehicle riding 13 plus hours to Texas. Okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so when you start having these conversations, you're just kind of like, and then you're looking out the window and you're really taking in what's being said. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, finally, we're just like, I'm in, are you in? Okay, we're in, you know? Yeah. So, so we have some uh, people joining us over here. We have Tina Marie from Illuminating the Paranormal. We have Julie Webb. We have Kelly, Kel G, um, and Greg, who's also 
part of the awesome. show. So awesome. we're happy to have everybody here with us. Um, if you cool. have any questions for Missy, um, just put those in the chat and we will have her answer those questions. Um, now, your mom did not live in Indiana, correct? No, she was, uh, I grew up in Kansas, mm -hmm. right outside of Topeka. And then her and uh, our stepdad retired in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Tallahassee, Oklahoma, Blinken, you are through it. Uh, <laughs> it's a very small <laughs> town. Uh, but she was so well known, like, oh my gosh, I never realized how many people she touched till she'd passed away. She had a little shop, not very big, but the people that she touched was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. did you feel like you had big shoes to fill and oh my I mean, do you still feel that pressure today? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I still don't think I'm not on her level by any means. Um, I don't feel like that anyway, but I do feel more confident mm -hmm. that I'm able to do the things that she was able to do. Um, might take me a little longer to figure it out. She was pretty quick on the draw, but she'd been doing it since I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know, um, her and her sister, you know, were highly into herbs. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, she definitely had a lot more years on me than, <laughs> than I've had to do it, but right you know. but did she, okay. So she taught you or she used these herbs. Is that how yes. she grew up or did she just you know, kind of take that on herself, became interested in that and just began studying that. I mean, what did she do? I mean, other than raise all of you kids. <laughs> so she, I know she had friends, you know, I recall different friends that she talked to about stuff like that. Um, you know, granted, we didn't have Facebook then we didn't have, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it was over the phone or writing letters to a friend of hers that lived down in West Virginia. I remember her, you know, talking to her about different stuff like that. And, um, but yeah, I mean, just people that she knew. Now I do know that she talked to her mother. Like um, I remember my, our grandma um, and my grandpa taking like papaya, for instance, for their stomach and things like that. And having conversations about, you know, different teas and, and things mm -hmm. like that. Now, whether or not they really got into those that much, I don't know. But I do know that I do recall hearing different conversations with them and mom making suggestions of different stuff. And they did try them. I, I know of different supplements that they took, you know, herbal mm -hmm. supplements, you know, to help out. I mean, something must have went right because they were both in their early 90s when they passed away. So, you know. Right. Yeah. So so it must have, you know, it must have just really been something she was really wanting to do. She was, and yeah, she was passionate about it. Like it wasn't awesome. just a, um, oh, I think I'm going to take a few supplements and, you know, um, forget about it for six or six months to a year or two. It was something she was pretty passionate about. And she made sure that we knew when she's handing us, oh, fenugreek tea, I can't even drink that stuff now. <laughs> oh, it's so good for you. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely good for you when you are sick, but it, uh, it's that texture thing that, no. uh, uh, <laughs> but it's good. I, I mean, you. don't get me wrong, but I remember her saying the first time she had me drink that and it looks like little coriander seeds. Mm -hmm. um and she had it in a tea steeper and it's in my cup and I pull it up and you see like this water like mucusy type stuff come out and that's just the you know everything coming out of the seeds right and I'm going oh I do not want to drink that mom don't make me drink that drink it it's good for you <laughs> and you're just like uh, uh, you know, when you're like nine years old, 10 years old, and your right. mom's telling you to drink this stuff, you're just kind of like, no, yeah, hold the nose, drink it, you know, but uh, then when she, after we drank it, mm -hmm. she would wait, you know, a couple hours or so and ask you, so you you're moving around here pretty well. You seem to be talking a lot better, you know, how you feeling? And you know, the throat wasn't so scratchy and 
you know, I was able to eat my supper and it not hurt my throat and, Uh you know, that type of thing. And then you stop to think about, okay, maybe it wasn't so bad after all, but you don't want to admit it at the time she's telling you to drink this stuff. Right. But I remember her going and having conversation, a conversation with me one time. I was adamant. I did not want to drink this, whatever it was she was wanting me to drink. (laughs) And she just looked at me and she says, and she put, she put her hand on mine and she looked at me. She said, I would never give you anything that I would not drink myself. Mm-hmm. I would never give you anything that I think would ever harm you at all. Mm-hmm. And I, and I said, well, I know that mom. And she says, then drink it. Okay. <laughs> right. But, you know, it was that, that little moment of, you know, just calming you down and saying, I would never this is purposely to help you, you know? And at that moment, you know, she can save the world and I'll drink my tea, you know? (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I totally get that. You know, so are there things that I know you've taken her recipes and for lotions and teas and everything else, and you've redone them and kind of added your own little spin to them, trying to stay as true to hers as possible. But are there other things that you've created that you've, that you've developed, you know, as far as lotions and stuff. Yeah. So as far as the lotions themselves, um, we have taken and kind of changed like some of the scent of, um, the baby lotion. We made it a little more, um, more neutral, more soothing, um, Mm -hmm. more soft. Um, we did as far as the traditional baby lotion, so um, in ours, we did the Lang Lang, um, and which is really good for young baby skin, you know, um, at, let alone adult skin. Um, but it doesn't have a perfume smell. It just has that nice, um, clean, um, just a soft smell to it, um, mm-hmm. which I had found notes uh, of hers that said, you know, that she had possibly thought about changing, you know, different things in it. And I thought, well, why not do it? You know? Mm -hmm. And so we did. And actually we had a really good response with it. We'd taken it to a couple of different shows and we had both of them and everyone seemed to really, you know, enjoy that, uh, Mm -hmm. smell. So it's a matter of, I found you find different (laughs) notes, not (laughs) directions, but you find notes, right? Of just different stuff that she had put as possibilities for different Uh stuff. And so at that point in time, I'm like, what do we got to lose? Let's just try those possibilities, you know? And to me, it, they worked out great. I think if she had followed through with them, she would have saw that herself, you know? Right. So we just took those extra steps that she weren't, wasn't able to do. I say we, I keep saying we, but I'm the one that mixes all this stuff. We I'm know you it. are the brewmaster. <laughs> we know. I mean, he, we now, being everybody, I guess now. <laughs> right. Well, he, Matt, my, Matt, my brother is the marketing guru. And that's what I tell him all the time is he's the guru of marketing. So he creates all of our labels. Um, He's the one who uh, decided upon um, packaging and things like that. So yeah, he's my marketing guru is what I call him. And then, uh, yeah, I got the title of brewmaster. So. Of course, <laughs> of course. I agree so, with that. I, yeah, mean, I agree yeah. with that. You make soaps, you make oils. I do. You do, you know, the yeah. lotions. And I mean, yeah. at one point you, I mean, I know you've also created shampoo, correct? I did. Yes. A couple of years ago, I'm, I used my children. God love them. I used my children as guinea pigs. And me. <laughs> yes, I was and one you. of those guinea pigs too. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, I made shampoo. And so I went and kind of had everybody test run it and see mm-hmm. how it turned out and what they thought of it. Mm-hmm. I've done that with a couple of lotions too. I've uh, reached out to different groups I've been in and say, hey, I need 10 people to be willing to try a lotion and then give me some feedback on it. And, you know, that's honestly the best way to do it Mm -hmm. is to just get some of the, get some people to try stuff. We've had people in Indianapolis. I've had people in Louisiana. I mean, 
all over different climates. Like I want different age groups, different climates. What do you, you know, where are Mm -hmm. you at? I want all those dynamics involved in deciding whether or not a product is good. And then Matt and I get together and we talked about what results we were hearing. He was hearing wonderful stuff up in Indianapolis. So the, some of the folks that he had ran into that were willing to try stuff. And we got good responses, you know, via messenger or we did a survey monkey thing and mm-hmm. uh, we got really good responses. So, I mean, honestly, that's the best way to do it is to, you know, if you're wondering about a product, have some test subjects, your guinea pigs, you know, I mean, those are the folks that are really going to give you the honest feedback. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I know you've created something for your grandson. And I did. Yeah. So would you mind talking about that? Because I think it's amazing. I, I really My, do. I, our grandson, Gavin, is on the spectrum. And he does not deal with crowds very well. Um, he has a hard time going shopping with his mom and dad. He has a hard time just in, you know, big crowds. Now, when he's here at our house with family, he's okay with it, but he has to have his alone time, you know, his separation from things. So it makes it hard for them to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. So one day I was here and I was working on uh, a happy blend, you know, is what I was calling it. And it's some orange and some clove and some uh, vanilla and just different stuff. And so his sister um, decides that he, she wants to smell it. Okay. So she smells it and, oh, I like that. You know, I like that mammal. That smells so good. Mm -hmm. And so I holler at Gavin and I said, Gavin, come smell this. And he goes, okay. And he comes over and he smells it and he stands there and his mom, you know, was kind of watching him and he went and he sat down and was playing with his phone again. Now he had been running around here like 90 miles an hour, you know, just not wanting to sit down. He had his phone or, that he was playing on. He'd run back, watch cartoons in the back bedroom, run back into the kitchen and grab something to snack on, go sit down on the couch for a couple of minutes and play with the phone and then back up and around again. After we had him smell this, um, his mom noticed first because I was in the kitchen mixing some stuff and she, she noticed first, she said, mom, she says, you know, Gavin's awful, awful calm and quiet what'd you put in that <laughs> I said it's, it's a magical potion <laughs> right I said it's just essential oils nothing serious why and she goes because he's just so calm yeah and I go she goes what do you call that and I said happy blend and she goes really and I said yeah and so I don't know an hour or so later here he goes again he's just like wound up right. and, and going to town and so I had put some in a roller and I gave it to her and I told her, you know, I'd put some carrier with it. And I told her, I said, you know, try it, you know, and see what happens. So right before they leave, she's like, Gavin, come here. And so she puts a little on the back of his hand Mm -hmm. and she takes his other hand and she rubs them together. Mm -hmm. And she says, what do you think? Smell him. So he goes like this and he smells them and he goes, oh, that smells good like that. He goes, Oh, good. Like that. And so she said, okay. And next thing you know, he just goes over and he sits down in, in his papal's chair and he's got his phone and, um, all calm, cool and collected and he's playing. So it's all up in his face. He's got the phone. So all of this is just going. And his mom just like, look at that. She Mm -hmm. goes, yeah, I really think you got something here. Mm -hmm. And I go, maybe we just need to call it Gavin's blend. (laughs) And she said, right. "Right?" She said, because now she carries it. She carries it with her everywhere in her purse. If they go shopping and they have to take Gavin inside, then that's what he wears before he goes inside. And she says she has noticed that when he's sitting in the cart, if he looks up and he sees a lot of people, he'll smell it real quick. And then he goes back to playing on the phone or tablet or whatever it is that he's messing with. And she, he's fine. That's so awesome. It's like, I love it's, that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And it was by accident. It wasn't anything that right. we were doing 
to create for Gavin. Right. It just happened to work out that that was something that he really connected with and it just it calmed him down. Yeah. So, I love that. You know, I, I think that's amazing. And I remember you telling me that and you know, that was one of the most out of everything. I mean, that is the one thing that I always remember. And I think that's just so amazing. You know, if there's anything that you can do to help a kid who has all kinds of anxiety and everything else, I think, mm -hmm. you know, why not, you know, right. and something right. as simple as that, I mean, is, yeah. is golden. Yeah. So, and, I, and who would have thought that that would have been his, you know, his thing, you know, right. that, that little trigger that he needed to calm him down, but I get it. Now I had diffuse it once in a while in the house, um, especially if I know they're going to be here and I'll diffuse it in the house and stuff. And I love the smell of it. Matter of fact, I've done some soap with that blend uh -huh. and uh, uh, our sister that lives out in uh, Topeka, uh, she's decided she wants three bars of soap with it. She just loves it. So it, it definitely is good. Greg's has got to find a Greg's blend. You can contact Missy and Missy will work with you and, and get a blend that's specifically for you. Um, seriously, exactly. that's, that's what she does. Um, so yeah. now I know we've talked about the business, but we have not talked about the name of the business. So would you mind talking about the name of your business and how that name came about? Because I know there's I a story behind any, that too. Yeah, I can't take any credit for the name. Um, that was all Matt and my sister-in-law, Erin. Um, mom's favorite color was purple. She's a February baby. So, you know, amethyst was her thing and, uh, she loved the color purple. Um, and she had her shop there in Tallahena, like I mentioned earlier, and it's the name of it was called timeless treasures. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we were trying to figure out names and everything, um, my sister-in-law came up with amaranthin. Uh -huh. And amaranthin is, um, it means purple and timeless. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's honestly just perfect. It fit exactly who she was. You know, she loved uh, purple. She loved the color. She loved amethyst and the, you know, <clears throat> healing of amethyst. Mm -hmm. So she, it just fit, you know, and timeless was part of her store. So, you know, and when you think about it, herbs are timeless, you know, as long as Absolutely. we have, have the, them in our lives. I mean, they're, I mean, they're always going to be around as long as we have plants. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it fit perfect. I can't take credit for that. I got, I got to give kudos where they de are deserved. So right. yeah. I think it's just really cool how everything came together. I mean, I know it was such a tragedy. I, like I said, I remember, I remember the phone call that I received from you that day, you know, about your mom and, you know, even about your aunt and, and then going forward, how everything started to evolve. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's like, even though I wasn't at your house, it was like, I know I've been there every step of the way because <laughs> we would talk just so y'all know, Missy and I can talk for hours on the phone. I mean, our husbands can attest to that. Um, <laughs> Oh, Terry's chiming in. Did you hear him? <laughs> no, I didn't. He, know he gets like bingo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, we do, we do talk a lot. I mean, as a matter of fact, we were talking last night um, and we were talking for over an hour and it's just something that's really natural and something that, that we do. Um, you know, so, I mean, I know a lot of the things that she's gone through and I've seen a lot of the you know, the, the things of, okay, do I do this? Do I do that? And trying to figure this out and try to figure this out. So she has this amazing story and, you know, most people don't get to hear her story and the whys as to why she does what she does. And that's why I absolutely wanted her on the show tonight because she has such a powerful story and she has amazing products that help everybody um, just most people don't know about them until today. Yep. 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 <laughs> so, yep. so uh, when you go and you, I, we started all of this, you know, yeah, I'm figuring out how to brew this, you know, make these brews of lotions and everything. Uh -huh. And I remember the conversation you and I had, and I'm like, if I'm going to do more with this, I got to figure out what I'm doing. And so I had to, you know, 
t- become an herbalist and, you know, get certified and, and go through classes and, you know, learn what I needed to learn and went through aromatherapy classes and finding out more about oils. And I mean, hours and hours and days and days and, you know, and fitting it in with trying to work too, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, Matt's just like, I'm glad you know what you're doing. And I'm like, who from your mouth to God's ears, you know, I'm not yeah. sure I know exactly what I'm doing, but we're going to figure it out. Yeah. And it's, it's just been a, it's been a journey. And I, yeah, I know that if I didn't do it, I don't think I'd feel as confident about it. I, it was something I had to do to make me feel like this is something I can do. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I, yeah. I agree with that. And yeah, I know about those hours and hours and hours <laughs> Don't of studying you know? and class. Yeah. I mean, how many hours of class did we take together for herbalist? I mean, oh my I, lord! Exactly. Let alone all the plants we grew and the essays we wrote. And, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but you know, I, I think that's what made it fun too is that we were doing that together and not, you know, something that yes. you had to do on your own. The same right. way with, um, you know the aromatherapist part of it, you know, we did that together. And, you know, mm-hmm. so these weren't things that we just, that either one of us did on our own. It, I mean, and, yeah. and I'll just tell you, it's so funny because Missy would find a course or I would find a course and we were sending it to each other. <laughs> we would send yep. it to each other and be like, should we do this? And we were like, yeah, let's do it. So we would work on things together. And, you know, if she had questions, I had questions. I mean, that's what we did. You know, we just right. would bounce things back and forth with each other. And it, it's right. just, it's just amazing. And that's why I said, she's my sister from another mister, because, you know, I, I can't say that I have done this much stuff with anybody else. Like I just haven't. And even though Missy and I never grew up together or grew up around each other, I mean, it's like, I've known her my entire life. Like when I first saw her, it was like, okay, she's been in my life somewhere. I know she's been in my life before this, even though she has it. And I still remember her looking the same way that she did, that she does now that she did then. That's the crazy part. It's like, she was never a different person. She's always been this person. So it's just so weird, but here we are today. And I think that's what made the classes so much. um, I don't want to say easier, but we got more involved in some of the stuff than we really needed to, to yes. as far as course requirements, you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, you, I don't know how much research you and I would do like on certain plants because they were, we were just fascinated by what it was we were reading about them. Yes. And so then we start doing our own research and we're like, okay, wait a minute, we need to rein this in a little bit because <laughs> we're not, we don't need to go this far in depth. But I, I mean, I remember, oodles of conversations you know about different stuff that we would work on so yeah yeah Yeah. and then the trial and error of planting things oh my god (laughs) oh my gosh how my mother had a green thumb is beyond me because I don't think she you know passed that on to me I think mine's kind of muddy mossy green or something it's got more brown than it does green because oh my goodness now Uh, I know you have an amazing garden though I mean, you, you have a lot of herbs. I don't, I can't, I can't plant as much herbs because I don't have the space to do it. So I try to do a lot of, a lot of container gardening and that kind of thing. But I know there are a lot of things that you plant. And I'll just tell you this one day, (laughs) Miss, Miss, you said, um, they had planted the peppers in once or the, the, um, jalapeno peppers, right? Yeah. You planted them in one thing and the wind blew and somehow they cross pollinated with something else. (laughs) green peppers and poor yeah. terry went out there and bought a he loves green bell peppers right so he just plucks one off the plant and he just takes a big old bite on it literally his lips were on fire and he comes in getting ice cubes rubbing them all over his mouth and everything else he said they were the hottest things he had ever eaten he said i've eaten jalapenos that aren't that high how did that happen right. and i was like i don't know they're bell peppers you know and then we got to thinking about it. We had put them in planters on the mm-hmm. deck too close to the garden. They needed to be, so from now on, we don't do that. They go on the other side of the house mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're nowhere near each other. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had no, 
I had no idea, you know. Believe me, I I remember that. And last right? year, I don't think I told you this, but last year I accidentally got some jalapeno peppers. And I was looking at those and I was like, well, what the heck did I get those for? And I was like, okay, they must've been in the wrong spot, whatever. So instead of putting those with my other stuff, no, they were cleared out at the other end of the house. It's like, y'all are just going to stay over here because I'm not going to have a, something happen. Like, right. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to have a Missy episode happen. Right? Right? Poor Terry and his burnt lips. Oh my God. Yes. I, I felt so that. bad for him, you know, at the same time, I'm kind of chuckling going, oh my gosh, those were hot, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they were hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poor so guy. now I know that you have other stuff in your store and not just, mm-hmm. you know, just lotions and stuff. And I, I did sell everybody. We were doing show and tell today. So, oh my gosh, we got so much stuff. Like I, know. I have a mo- I have such a talented husband. Let me yes. just say this. I, I um, agree. He does a lot of woodwork and stuff like that. So, um probably one post is probably posted on my amaranthin um i've got some stuff going to post on our amaranthin page um mm-hmm. he's made some crosses and yes um, i'm telling you got he, stuff behind me so yes. um, he has made all kinds of stuff and so this it's is just one amazing. of the crosses that he made i don't know if you can see that mm-hmm. but yeah, I can see that. they're different shapes they never come out the same. This is burnt with electricity. So they that's the fun thing about it is no one looks the same. I mean, even though they're different shapes, none of the burn marks are the same. Yeah. So yeah. he's made crosses. He's made some meditation boxes. And do we get to see those? Yeah. And we have um an altar box, dedication box, urn box, whatever you want to use it box. Um, Right now I have a candle in it that my good friend Jen made me that has my mom's picture on it. (laughs) (laughs) So that, that is her in the box there. Um, So yeah, we have all kinds of different stuff, lotion and soap. Uh So yeah. Yeah. So we got all kinds of goodies. Yeah. She has um, different mixes. Yeah, tea mixes and um, the boxes are really cool. Like the boxes you could use if you have, um, if you're looking for an on the go altar box, it would be really perfect for that. It's definitely portable. It comes in two different ways. Like one just has the the lid where it just fits on top. And then you have the one where it has the one of them here. Yeah. So Um, this one has just the flat box with flat top uh that just sets. Mm-hmm. Down inside. I mean, can you think of? I mean, I could put like I don't know tarot cards in there. I could put right? all bunch of crystals in there. I'm telling you, I, I'm thinking of a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah, and and even somebody who's not into you know tarot or crystals or anything like that, mm-hmm. how cool of a jewelry box would this be? You know, yeah, what I mean? absolutely. I yeah. mean, you could put some aromatherapy oils in here and pendants. I mean, yeah. You could do all kinds of stuff with this. I mean, and it's really cool because not one side is the same. It all burns right. differently. Now, could he also stain those? Yeah. Now this is just clear coated. So uh-huh. that's all he's done with these. He burnt them and then just clear coated them. But yeah, you could stain them. Um, well, I, Terry can stain it. <laughs> <laughs> do that. Um, but but here's the thing you kind of have to be careful on the stain that you get because you don't want it too dark so that your your um burns don't show up you know right but what if they don't want it burn like that and they just want it stained i mean could you oh, do yeah. something like yeah, that that's just, what i mean oh yeah, yeah definitely definitely they can be plain they can be stained now he did do i don't know if you can see this or not oh. greg says he used to make buddha candles that's oh, interesting cool. yeah yeah so i love buddha this. oh he made me this for my stones i've got amethyst and quartz yeah and stuff. she only has a few things on etsy right now um she just reopened her store back up and she will be putting a lot more on etsy but if you go to yeah. her facebook page you'll find a lot more of her products and um if there's something that you want custom made or custom blended 
um, you can actually just send her a message from her Facebook page um, or even from Etsy too, just send her a message from there and um, she can talk to you about what it is that you're looking for and, you know, whether it's lotions or oils or, um, you know, some special blend that's just for you. And, and we know she does like migraine blends too. Um, her daughter has migraines and she's made a blend that's just for her and that can be custom made and adjusted for just for you for whatever you're looking for. Yep. Yep. So instead of the lightning, you on can the... actually, um, you can order things. Like I said, you can order from Etsy or you can oh, yeah. get with her on Facebook on her page. And, um, so, and then you can go through there and she can send you, um, the amount through PayPal and, um, you can pay it through straight through there and then she can ship all of that to you. And, Tina Marie says, has she ever used crystals within her oils so that the properties of the crystals are imbued within the oils? Have you ever done that before? Like crystal chips? I have not recently. Um, I made one for a friend of mine. She wanted it, you know, a blend for her. And so I did do that for her. But as far as uh, putting them in the shop, not yet. I, that is something that I do want to do. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, most that's definitely. Coming. So that's coming, Tina Marie, where she's going to be adding those little crystal chips into oil blends and um, that kind of thing. Most so, definitely. Um, but definitely, if you're interested in ordering something from her, you know, you can go to her Facebook page, um, or you could go to um, Etsy and send her a message because I do know that she works. She she custom makes the oil blends and not just you know, it's not you know, one of these oil blends that there's like 20 of, you know, unless 20 people want the same blend. I mean, you know, then it's <laughs> right. be the same blend, right. but you know, she right. can customize a, an oil blend that's specifically for you, just like she did, you know, with, with the one for Gavin and, and, um, and her daughter, you know, she custom made that for her and, um, it works really well for that. So, but absolutely do that. And, um, she said, I know somebody said, that's you. a fan of patchouli. That would be me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do love patchouli. So yes. Um, yeah. but yeah, so there's that's where you can actually go to get all of that stuff. And so what were you gonna show there, Missy? Oh, so um Terry made me a box for um a show we're gonna do. Um and mm -hmm. so it holds my stones in here, my amethyst and quartz and stuff. So just on the outside of it, though, he just lightly torched it, you know, to without mm -hmm. having to stain it. I don't mm -hmm. I didn't want anything um, with stain um, per se, especially mm -hmm. with the stones. Right. This right. is just naturally, you know, just torched a little and then just clear coated to seal it. And then, yeah. So I'm excited because I get to take this to shows. <laughs> OK. I'm going to see if I can't, I'm afraid to do that and lose it, but I'm going to try it. Um, I'm going to try, I'm going to see if I can't put the link of your shop in here on um, oh, okay. Facebook. Yeah. Because they are actually asking for that and hopefully I find it again. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that once before and I lost where... <laughs> I lost the chat at one point in time. So it's right. like, yeah, let me hopefully find it. Yes. So, all right, here we go. Uh, good, I got it right back to it. Good. Okay, so I that is her Facebook page. Um. So this way you can go right to that. And, and our Etsy link is on our Facebook page. Yes. So. So you'll be able to find that. Now, not everything is on the Etsy yet. The lotion is on there and our aromatherapy jewelry is on there. Mm -hmm. um, but I do not like, um, we have new tea blends. Like this one is my black currant tea blend. And that mm -hmm. looks so yummy. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, it tastes yummy too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just black tea with black currant leaves and oh my gosh, it's so good. But anyway, so we'll have the tea blends on there and, and all of that as well. So, 
Right. So what other lotions do you make um, besides that? So we have Ease Lotion, Eczema Lotion. Okay. Um, two baby lotions. We have a regular baby lotion and a nighttime baby lotion. And I love the nighttime baby lotion. It smells mm-hmm. so good. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lilac, um, mm-hmm. which is a little bit different formula than say our base lotions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have, uh, I don't have much left of the gingered peach. Um, what I use to blend that I'm not able to get anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a little bit of the gingered peach. Um, we have one called leather and lace, no mm-hmm. comments. <laughs> The reason why it's called leather and lace, though, is because it is um, both men and women like the smell. And we never Mm -hmm. really realized that both guys and gals would like it. Mm -hmm. At first, we were going to call, I don't even remember the first name we were going to call it. And we took it someplace and we found out that guys and gals both liked it. I've only known it as leather and lace, so I don't know what you were going to call it before. Yeah. Um, and so then we have, um, cucumber melon and the fairy plum or cucumber right? aloe. I'm sorry. Cucumber aloe. Huh? And you have the fairy plum lotion. I do have sugar, sugar plum fairy. Yes. Yeah. That's my favorite lotion. I it love is. that. It's just, <laughs> it is. It's supposed, it is. To be for, it's supposed to be for little kids, but Hey, I love it. I'm just telling right? you. Oh, well, you're not the only, you're not the I'm only grown up that you, likes That's like my so, favorite, yeah. that's my favorite lotion. Yeah. Yeah. It smells so good. It does. It yeah. really does. Yep. It, so, yeah. yeah so like you, you, you gotta have the good ones, like the ease lotion for pain relief and the eczema lotion, which my grandkids use the eczema lotion every year. Um, that's the only thing, honestly, Gavin has some eczema issues and that's the only thing that he can use that doesn't cost an arm and a leg like over the counter. And it's not steroids. Mm -hmm. I have some, I have one lady who orders it specifically for her daughter because she has such adverse reactions to steroids. Mm -hmm. And that's most of what the doctors want to give her is a steroid lotion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's a young little girl. She's maybe, you know, four or five years old. And mom's like, we can't do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't blame you. You know, if you can find something that is natural that works, why not use it? Exactly. You know, yeah. I think that's I think that's really important. Instead of just putting a bunch of chemicals and everything else into our body, I think that's one of the greatest things that can be done. Because I mean, if you think about it, years ago, that's you know they they were their own. Right? You know, they they lived yep. off the land, and mm-hmm. you know they used those plants in Definitely. order to heal themselves and stuff. So why not? you know, right now the lotions that you make, are they similar to the lotions? Do they go along with that? Um, or is, are the soaps different? So the soaps that I make, um, they're also vegan. There are not no animal products in those as well. Um, and I don't do a lot of cream soaps because some of the cream soaps have an animal base to them. I do have only one cream soap that is not, it's more of a coconut milk, but it's an oatmeal soap. Um, And there again, um, thinking of the grandkids, you know, they were my guinea pigs Mm -hmm. (laughs) and everybody seemed to enjoy it. So, and, you know, we use it. And when I say guinea pigs, I include me and my husband as well. You know, we, you know, toss the lotion or soap or whatever that we're using, you know, on, on ourselves. So, you know, we know how well it works. So Mm -hmm. when, um, I made, uh, I have a hemp soap and an aloe soap and an oatmeal soap. Um, I think those are the three bases. And then, um, this last one I made with the happy blend and, Mm -hmm. I can't keep it. Like everybody just loves it. You know, Mm -hmm. the smell of it. Um, and then I've done honeysuckle. Um, Mm -hmm. honeysuckle is a real popular one too, because it just has a nice clean smell to it. It smells like the honeysuckle bushes outside the house I grew up in as a little girl. So it does. I love that smell. That's one of my favorite, you know? Yeah. And it has such a It's a sweet smell, kind of a floral smell, but it's just a clean smell. Like it's not overbearing. It's so light and delicate. 
Um, so yeah, the honeysuckle is really popular too, um, in the soap. So, um, every year my stepmom, uh, orders, uh, lotion or soap for her family. Mm -hmm. And she gives that away for Christmas at the last two years. And she says, everybody loves it. So, Mm -hmm. Well, you know. next time I, I end up with poison ivy or something, you and I are going to create some kind of poison ivy soup. <laughs> <laughs> you and Terry, I mean, that poor man can't even walk, you know, downwind of it without getting it. Oh, know? I, I understand. We have, yeah. we have, um, there's some kind of vine that grows on the shrubs in the front. And I know we've talked about this before mm-hmm. and um, it has these little white, flowers on it I can't even be I can't even touch the bag that it goes in Mm -hmm. without breaking out so I'm I'm right with Terry I'm definitely allergic to that so yeah yeah that but if I ever get poison ivy again I'll be calling you and say all right Missy fix me some soap (laughs) right (laughs) you gotta figure this out because you gotta figure it out yeah it it, it, yeah because I get it really bad yeah most definitely yeah Honeysuckle equal equal summer at the shore for us. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That I agree. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. your tea blends. What do you have yes. for tea blends? So right now we have um, four. Okay. Okay. We have a black currant, which is a black tea with currant leaves. Okay. Mm-hmm. That one's really good, either hot or cold. The ones that I have blends of right now, because we're heading into spring, um, can be either hot or cold, okay? Um, Brew it warm and then chill it is the best way to do it because you want to get the, you know, all the benefits out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that one's really good with like, because it has has the black currants in it. That's good with like a little orange slice, Maybe you want to add a little lemon to it, or if you want a sprig of mint, that would be good with it. And then we have a honey bush mm-hmm. and elderberry blend. Um, and that also is good with, you know, a little lemon or mint sprig if you want. Um, the honey bush is good for um, women that uh, are going through menopause. Um, mm-hmm. It helps with those menopausal symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also good for inf- inflammation. Um, it's, you know, a good, uh, product for that. So, I mean, that's one that you can add some and don't sweeten it with sugar. That's one of the worst things we can eat is that processed sugar. If you can, if you can use raw honey, that's the best thing in the world too, for herbal teas or any mm-hmm. teas really. Um, so then we also have a fruit blend. Now my fruit blend has a little bit of everything in it. It has some rose hip and some lemongrass and some hibiscus and some peppermint and then a little orange peel. So that one's really nice to add like some orange slices to when it's warm or maybe add a little extra orange peel to it when you're brewing it. Um, Or if you want maybe a little lemon or mint Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, any of that would be good with it. And then we have a chamomile and elderberry Mm -hmm. and the chamomile is so soothing, but that elderberry also helps with our immune system. So it's like with all this stuff going on right now, it's not going to hurt anybody to have a little help with the immune system. Right. Uh, Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Because before long, we're going to have allergy season going on. Oh, we're and, already there, honey. We're already there. Right? Oh, you and me both. My sinuses are crazy. Yeah, we're so already there. So most people, some, well, I should say some people, when they have start going through allergies and the mm-hmm. sinuses, then you start opening up yourself to other stuff, you mm-hmm. know, like a, a spring or summer cold. So why not work on the immune system when you already know all of this is kind of messed up anyway, so that you're not taking a chance on, you know, exposing yourself to something else. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of those are really good ones. And we have them in one ounce bags. I find that one ounce loose leaf bags are better. That way, if you try it and you like it, you can always get more. And Mm -hmm. we do offer a uh, four ounce bag too. Um, for those that really like the blend and want more. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah. Now, I I know you also make the um, elderberry syrup too, correct? I do, do you, make elderberry syrup. Do you syrup. sell that or is that just for... I do. Um, right now, I don't have any that that's made up. I pretty much sold out of everything that I had as far as elderberry <laughs> syrup. Um, it happens. Yeah, that's one that, you know, everybody... Like I said, you know, with all this stuff going on, Mm -hmm. you know, with the virus and, you know, flu season and, you know, sinus issues and everything else, you know, people are thinking about their immune system, you know, do I take a little more zinc and some vitamin D and, you know, and all of that. And I say, yes, yes to all the above, you know, Mm -hmm. um, but elderberry is one of those things that, you know, um, is not hard on our system you know, mm-hmm. compared to some stuff that we could be doing. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, it's definitely one that, and uh, the syrup is just so soothing, you know, and you can add it to your tea. That's the beauty of it. So let's say you don't like herbal tea. I know people that don't. Um, mm-hmm. The youngest, our youngest daughter, uh, she, she, my mother would have had fun with her when she was a child <laughs> trying to get her to drink anything. And she's right. a grown adult and that's difficult to get her to drink any herbal teas, yeah. but the elderberry syrup, um, is nice to add to a drink. So even if you're drinking some coffee in the morning, mm-hmm. get put a shot in there, you know, mm-hmm. of elderberry it's, if you drink sugar in your tea or in your coffee or some sort of sweetener, it's just going to add a little sweetness to it. You're hardly ever going to notice it and, you know, Mm -hmm. kick it back. Absolutely. Yeah. There's ways to get it in there. You just got to figure it out. Right. Get it in there. You know, what could you cook with that? I mean, would you be able to cook? Like, I mean, even if you, I mean, you're talking about putting a little bit in coffee, what could you just pour that a little bit into food if you have, Oh yeah. Oh, you know, especially kids. So, um, our, our, granddaughter Evelyn is not a friend a big fan of fruit I don't understand that um but she doesn't like fruit okay <laughs> right so could be a texture thing it, it could be I don't know um but she knows when there's elderberry okay mm-hmm. she knows you can't add it to juice because she knows it so that's one that you have to figure out how to add it to something sweet that she's already eating. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then try to get her to do it that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-mm. <laughs> you just have to find ways to incorporate stuff that no you don't maybe like the taste of that much right off the bat. Yeah. Then figure out how to, you know, I mean, figure out how to cook with it, you know, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we cook with coriander and coriander is great for us. You Mm -hmm. know, I mean, there's, there's spice, basil, you know, some people Mm -hmm. even make, you and I had to experiment with basil (laughs) tea. Oh my gosh. We had to experiment with basil tea. I am not a fan of basil tea. Let me just say that right off the bat. Right. Um, We've had quite a few different things that, right. Oh my. Right. (laughs) But Ba- I love basil in my spaghetti sauce. I love basil in my cooking. And so there's ways to incorporate all that. Mm-hmm. We have any questions? Is that what you were looking at? Yeah. Greg was saying, I drink black tea and lemon. Yep. Um, lemon all year long. Um, is there anything that you would recommend to replace it? Replace the lemon? I guess the uh, black tea with lemon, what would you suggest? Is there something else that you would suggest? Try our black tea in current, Greg. I think you'll like it. See? I think you will. Yeah. And her happy blend. That might be really good for you. Yeah, you may need a little roller of happy blend, Greg. (laughs) Yeah, he has PTSD. So that's why I said maybe the happy blend would be really good for him. Um, You and I have talked about PTSD before because- of my car accident I had years ago. It took yeah. me, you know, it took me a while to not want to hug the right side of the road all the time, you know, being right. hit head on. Those are real things. Those are triggers, you know, yeah. and if you can figure out something that works for you to help mm-hmm. mellow that out and 
keep you from having the heart racing palpitations and everything else by all means definitely yeah yeah Yeah. you know that's why i said you know maybe the happy blend would work too for him it Um, might yeah you know i mean there's nothing wrong with with trying it i mean what sizes what sizes do you sell that stuff in? do you sell everything in so um depending upon Mm -hmm. what they're wanting to use it for okay Mm -hmm. we have a 10 ml um roller if you're wanting to roll it atopically um and it has a carrier in it i use um coconut oil unless you have a nut oil Mm -hmm. um allergy if you have allergies to nuts we don't use coconut um but um sometimes i'll use aloe gel or something like that you know Mm -hmm. if somebody has a nut allergy um so we do either a roller you know type for a, a topical um or we can do regular oils to for aromatherapy i mean it's it depends on what a person's wanting but yeah we have a 10 ml roller mm-hmm. um for a topic and then i have a um 10 ml squeak it's a little squeeze dropper bottle um mm-hmm. that we do for aromatherapy mm-hmm. so yeah and those are a nice little one to try mm-hmm. you know just to see if it's something that's going to work for you and it's not real expensive you know mm-hmm. um the little um the little aromatherapy bottle is, uh, 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, roller is, um, also, uh, $20. Um, but it, it, they're nice because they last a long time. You're only going to use a few drops when Mm -hmm. you're doing the aromatherapy because you've got a hundred percent oil, you know, that's Mm -hmm. in there. Um, and when I say there's a hundred percent, well, you could take and have it tested and find out it's a hundred percent oil. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you can take that and put it on those little lava beads, um, the necklace or the bracelets, you know, put those on there. <laughs> um, and then, um, one of these? Marie has a question too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The nice thing is, is that if you're somebody like me who has a little PTSD from a car accident, this is a little aromatherapy thing that clips in your car Mm -hmm. and you set it right on the vent. And so you got the scent in your car the whole time. I have one in my car that I use all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, So, but yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, you know, especially you could wear that. And if you're having, you know, a moment when you're out and about, you've got it right there. And that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, cause I mean, I know we're not always in our car or anything else, but that's something you would, you could put on like every day and, and go about your day. So you, know? you were talking about hat wearing it. So mm-hmm. all of the grandkids got one of these for Christmas one year. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> this is an extra one that I have. Um, <laughs> I had to order them and, you know, mm-hmm. so anyway, these slip out the little, they, they just slip right out of there that all the silicone and mm-hmm. So all the grandkids got one, which Gavin has his, and it just snaps on, you know, it's Mm -hmm. a little snap bracelet. Um, So yeah, these are perfect for kids. Like, you know, they love to snap it, but every time they do that hit, just the aroma is just, you know, Mm -hmm. they don't realize that they're helping themselves. They're playing with the bracelet. (laughs) you know well yeah but i mean that's that's the great thing i mean you learn yeah. better when you're playing and even with kids so good. i think it's great um, so tina marie them. tina marie has a question she says yeah. green basil or purple basil do either of you feel there is a difference i don't i, I think in the smell there is oh definitely yeah you know? i don't think that there is properties wise so much mm-hmm. as there is smell mm-hmm. and if you're using um, one, as far as, um, cooking, I do know that there, it's one a is a little a stronger than the other yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as too. far as properties, no, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't feel that there really honestly is much difference between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, one grows in, one was more prevalent, prevalent in Europe and the other was not. And, um, it changed when they brought it over here. Um, so it's one of those things that uh, the properties 
aren't much different. They pretty much do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of uh, one has a real strong smell to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think personally, the purple is stronger. Yeah, uh, I do too. Yeah. I, and, I do too. Um, that's the one that was originally in Europe was the purple, mm -hmm. um, and then was brought over here. Mm -hmm. The green you see a lot here, mm -hmm. um, more so than you do the purple. Yeah. Now, I actually plant both of those, um, every year. And yeah, yeah. I agree that the purple yeah. is much stronger. And well, and that's the same way with green. sage, you know, there's yeah. different sages as well. Absolutely. I have a purple sage that's out in my garden out front mm -hmm. and, it has a really strong sage smell to it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a different smell than say the white sage, sage does. Yeah. So, Which we know I we mean, can't grow here in Indiana. Right? <laughs> not, not where Mr. Not from a lack of trying. <laughs> yeah, it's not know, from a lack tried. of trying. Know, we definitely we tried. tried. We tried. Yeah. We yeah. tried, but we yeah. just, yeah, it didn't work. We don't have the right climate, dang it. I know. That's I'm another sad. reason why to move south, right? <laughs> I know. I'm going to move to Florida. I'm going to go to Florida. I'm just going to, I'm going with Tina Marie. Tina Marie's moving to Florida too. So I'm moving to Florida. Missy, you're just okay. going to have to, Terry, you're going to have to pack your stuff up and move with us. <laughs> right uh, <laughs> yeah we definitely have the wrong climate for white yeah. sage which was so disappointing but our plants lasted longer than i thought they would last yeah i mean the fact yeah, yeah i mean we had to grow different types of plants and we did learn you know what works well here what did right. okay here and what really didn't work here right which was <laughs> absolutely wrong here yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's one of those things that really didn't grow here <laughs> yeah no no that was when the brown thumb came into play because yeah. that was not yeah that yeah. was not a big hit but it, it was fun though learning all these different things and doing um creating the recipes you yes. know that um this but oh my gosh the italian um seasoning that that had to be made it's like i still got a ton of that do you <laughs> that's so funny i may yes. have to come get some from you you yes because it did i mean it 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 made a lot and i'm like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> so what yep. we what missy would do is missy would make some things i would make some things and then we'd compare notes <laughs> right yeah so, yeah how come i i was the one who got to taste a lot of the teas and uh, let me just tell you a lot of those teas were not <laughs> yeah, good yeah. when you drink one and it tastes like hey there's something wrong i'm just saying <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I, I yeah that one definitely would need a lot of honey and I'll even add some elderberry or goji berries or something. Oh, she, Tina Marie said she just planted seeds for licorice basil. Oh, she can't wait. I bet that's really going to taste. Where did you find that out? Because now I'm going to have to find that, you know, right? I'm going to have to find that and try that because I bet that's really okay. Good. I am not a huge licorice fan, which we've had this conversation too. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a huge licorice fan, but, um, I don't mind a hint of it in mm -hmm. some of the teas, you know, uh, mm -hmm. just that little hint of it. And it's so good for us. I mean, it really is, mm -hmm. but I, I got to get past the flavor. And so if I can, <laughs> if I can disguise it and blend it with other yeah, stuff, I was going to say, with, yeah, you have to do like you do for your granddaughter. <laughs> right? Sneak it in there. Yeah. She won't eat the fruit and I'm not eating the licorice. So my luck would be she'd eat the licorice and then I'd eat her fruit. So, you know, it all worked out. Right. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course. It always has to be backwards, you know? Yeah. It was funny the other day, uh, the oldest granddaughter, she's 11. She uh, was on the, uh, her, I was on the phone with her mom and she says, tell mama I need some elderberry. And her mom's like, where the heck did that come from? You know, it was just out of the blue. She just mm -hmm. needs some elderberry. That girl probably hasn't had elderberry for quite a few months, but all of a sudden she just decided she needed to wow. have some. And so her mom's just like, where did that come from? And I go, she knows what's right. <laughs> so Greg says, this is really fascinating and great info. Thank you. And Tina Marie says, agreed, Greg. Oh, thank yeah. you guys. Yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is, I mean, this is the way, this is, uh, you know, our conversations, we go from talking from, you know, about crystals to plants and herbs. And um, now yeah. it's, you know, we'll be talking about, okay, what are we planting in our gardens this year? What kind exactly. of things and looking exactly. through seed catalogs? Yes. Burpee seeds. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll check that out. She says burpee seeds. She think 
she thinks. Oh, that's them. where she got the liquors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we'll definitely have to be checking that out. Cause I mean, that's, yeah. that's what we do. We go through and we're talking about catalogs and, and um, you know, yeah. if we find um, a website that's got a lot of great information or we think the other one needs to check out, I mean, we're constantly, I mean, to the point that I have a group set up that's just for me and Missy to, <laughs> to right? post we do to put links right. back and forth in, because of everything group. gets lost in a chat yes yeah, speaking you know, of so, groups, so we want to start i want to start a group called amethyst way mm -hmm. and amethyst way is going to be part of um amaranthan and on facebook amethyst way i is encouraged for people that like now you know greg's like wonderful information and tina marie's like great information i agree you know those are the people we want in a group that we're talking about putting together um where you can share information you know um where did you find your you know purple basil at you know where can i find you know, um, elderberry plants, where can I find, you know, whatever. So th that way there's that connection, there's that community. Um, I don't need third party oil sellers, you know, coming in and wanting to do. This is for people to share information so that they can empower themselves with mm -hmm. their health care. I think it's, you know, like I said earlier, I'm not a physician. I don't claim to be a physician and I don't play one on TV. Okay. So um, <laughs> I just want to work with you and your physician mm -hmm. to make sure. I mean, I can speak from personal experience. I was on metformin for two and a half years because I'm hypoglycemic. I am no longer on metformin anymore because I changed my diet and I worked on er, with herbs and I personally was able to do that. Doesn't mean everybody can do that, mm -hmm. but why not be able to find what you can to help yourself? Maybe you can reduce your dosage, you know, maybe there, your doctor can put you on something else that's not as, you know, hard on your kidneys. Yeah, you know, absolutely. But whatever the case may be, but at least you're taking that empowerment back. You know, mm -hmm. it's not all in the hands of Western medicine. And that was the whole point in, you know, um, people doing things with herbs is because doctors weren't around, you mm -hmm. know, they had to do what they had to do. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, right. alchemy has been around for centuries. Alchemy was, you know, for those that are, you know, that or Bible readers that's been around since, you know, Bible times even. So it's alchemy has been around forever. Mm -hmm. And um, at one point in time, society thought that women couldn't be healers. Only men could be healers mm -hmm. unless you were taught by a man mm -hmm. and you lived in a remote area, then they might believe what you had to say. <laughs> but I think that's where the, the term witches, witches came from too. Exactly. Um, was exactly. from all of that, you know, exactly. and, and I think that's just, you know, yeah. you know my thoughts on that. Oh, but. I know. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. But somebody who went and say, you know, someone had a headache and this woman knew that, you know, using or a sore throat and somebody knew that slippery elm helped mm -hmm. with a sore throat. Natives used herbs for years. Absolutely. Years, yeah. You know, so yeah. if, if she was to go and say, chew on some slippery elm and you'll get rid of your sore throat and it worked. Oh my gosh, she's a witch. Yeah. You know, she used magic. It, but if a man had done it, it would have been differently, but that was the times then, yeah. you know, um, now you have men and women and, you know, I, I'm, I haven't seen as many recently, but young, young ones are trying to maybe learn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you see more in like 4-H and things like that, where they're learning about plants and, and stuff. Yes. And you hope they retain it. You hope they keep it and maybe- yeah. And on it, you know? I think the ones that are really interested in it will. Um, but then, you know, you're going to have some others who, you know, they're just doing it right, whatever, and then they'll move on. Right. And, you know, what happened with me is what got me interested and kept me interested is when I was, you know, like six years old, 
And I was being taught by a Native American of all the different plants and stuff, you know, what was edible, what wasn't edible. And right. I'm sorry that I didn't get to continue that because we moved. But, right. you know, that's something that stuck with me. There's a lot of things I don't remember about growing up or anything else. I mean, I have different, there's certain memories that I have, right. you know, from, um, well, basically seven years old was like my, my, the one year that I do remember, but right. even a little bit before that, you know, I remember certain things, but not everything. And that's one of the things that I remember. And, um, thank you, Tina Marie. She sent it, um, sent me the link. Um, it, it, she bought it from Amazon. So I'll send you that link. Oh, awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. And, um, Greg says calling Dr. Mel two, two, two. So <laughs> I guess you got a new nickname now. I guess Dr. Mel. Oh that's right. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that's where I got my start. And um, yeah. Yeah. I, I never, I never forgot that. And I've always had that interest in everything. Uh, and I know like you, I mean, we would go outside and find rocks and sticks and flowers and, you know, we, <laughs> we would go to the park and, you know, we're supposed to be over there fishing, which it's like, yeah, okay, we'll leave the pole here. And where am I clear over here doing something else <laughs> right? that has nothing to do with fishing, <laughs> but yeah. everything to do with, oh, let's go look at these pretty flowers. Exactly. Let's go pick up these rocks. You know, that yeah. was what I did. I didn't, yeah. you know, the fish can wait. <laughs> Matt and I talked about um, a little before Christmas um about going with mom elderberry hunting every year mm -hmm. and you know where she lived at outside of uh, Topeka um country roads they called um you know it'd just be county roads like here um right. but country roads back there they called the bluffs you know bluff roads mm -hmm. and um we'd go all along the roadside you know and collect these now you know, the highway department, state department, they're not coming down there at this, this, you know, back then spraying and all of that stuff like they would do now. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember hunting, you know, elderberries, bags upon bags of elderberries. And then we'd have to sit there and pluck them off the stem into the bowl. And we never knew that you weren't really supposed to eat those, you know, you're supposed to cook those, you know, you're not supposed to just eat them you know, here we were wanting to eat them, you know, you're plucking berries off, you know, why can't you eat them, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, we, oh, I'd hate to think of how many, how many bags of elderberries, you know, we remember plucking off of stems and mom made elderberry syrup. And I mean, that's stuff we grew up with too, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah another, I get it. It's like, you remember those things of, you know, what you helped out with or whatever. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, I don't for, I mean, I forage like my dandelions and stuff. Uh, that's what I was going to go. Yeah. Yeah. So I would forage if you know that you and your neighbors aren't using pesticides or fertilizers or anything like that. And even if you are wash them, you know, use some warm salt water and wash them, you know, um, dandelions are wonderful for us. You know, they're a good diuretic. They're, um, good for our stomach. Um, you they can, can eat be made into a tea. Yeah. And you can make them into a tea. tea. You can put them in a yep. salad. I mean, the, you can yes. you can actually have the entire um, plant, the whole plant of the dandelion. Yeah. Yeah. The whole plant is good for mm -hmm. you. Um, so the leaves are great in salads. You know, if you mm -hmm. get some nice fresh ones are good in salads. The younger mm -hmm. ones are a little better than the older ones. The older ones have, a you know, the bigger ones have a tendency to be a little bitter. Those are better for right. tea. Um, right. And then you know, dry the root, you know, dandelion mm -hmm. root tea is good for you. So yeah, if you know that, you know, what you have is not affected by that stuff. And even if it, you know, your neighbor just sprayed, wash it, you know, mm. I mean, let's just, you know, you want to get the little critters out of there anyway. Those little ants love those yellow dandelions. Right. So, you know, you right. got to put some salt water in there to get those little boogers out. But right. yeah, yeah. We grew up eating fried dandelions, like the blooms. Uh huh. Yeah. We'd go out and we'd pick them take them in. Mom put them in a big rubber tub and uh, salt and warm water and wash them and let them soak, you know, for an hour or two to make sure we got all the little critters out. 
And um, I remember helping using the egg wash and flour and frying them and she couldn't get them done quick enough. We were popping them like candy. I mean, we mm -hmm. loved them. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, nowadays you talk about eating dandelions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but right. yeah, great. We loved them, right. you know? Right. They were good stuff. So, right. Yeah. You know, the only thing you really have to do if you're going to go out and do any kind of foraging is make sure that you know your it's, area, yes. you know, because you, there are some plants that look very similar and you can get a hold of something that you probably shouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, make sure that you know what you're doing before you go out just foraging an area. Make sure that you know what your native plants are. And if you yeah. aren't sure of what something is, ask um yeah ask. you know um ask somebody who does know what it is and, and there's before you go these, and there's enough of these apps out there when you oh, take yeah. a picture of it it'll mm -hmm. identify what that plant is yeah you know, even if you have to use google imaging you know do mm -hmm. something to find out for sure what it is that you're picking yeah, always take some gloves with you if you're going to go out yeah. doing that, um, yes. you know, because you want to protect your hands at all costs and mm -hmm. um, make sure you have the right, you know, bags. You don't want to start throwing everything in together. I mean, because then you got to go back and sort through it and identify which is which, you right. know, so make sure you do have the right kind of bags or containers that you want to use or baskets, whichever you prefer when you're going out to forage for plants. Yeah. But, you know, know your area, know your region when you are foraging for plants, you know, know what's native to your land. And, um, you know, I mean, at the park, I mean, we, we had that you know, we had the great thing of having the park at our fingertips. And, you know, there was an, uh, you know, somebody at the nature center who could help us with a lot of different things that helped us to identify not only plants, but different animals, like the different snakes, because we do have snakes in our area. So we were able to learn to identify, you know, what these animals are and to know what to look for. And, you know, we learned about the owls and stuff that's in our area. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can learn and, you know, you just have to be careful. But even when you're out foraging, you have to know, it's a good thing to know the snakes too, because, you know, they do oh, yeah. crawl on the ground. So you might want to know what right. they are, whether it's right. a rattlesnake or is it a black snake, you know, or is it a, just a, a garden snake, you know, type right. of thing. So you really want to know um, all of that stuff too, before you yeah. go out and do Most that. Definitely. So, yep. Yeah. For right. sure. But it's fun. I mean, it's fun to go, you know, out and see what all you can identify and mm -hmm. you know, come up with. Yeah. So, so during the first bit of what was that 2019 when, or 2020, when we've had the shutdown, right? Mm -hmm. um, my, our three of our grandkids were still living here and we went for a walk. We went walking down our road. And so I started showing some of the kids, you know, the, some of the different plants that grew in the area. And, you know, then they started telling me the next time we went, Hey, mammal, is this chickweed? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's exactly what that is. Hey, mammal. I know those are dandelions. Yep. That's what those are. You know, I mean, they started picking them out now, whether or not they could still do it, I don't know, but it's um it was fun it got them engaged and you know got them out of the house and you know things like that so yeah i mean if we i think that if we can just teach these young folks you know mm -hmm. hopefully something would you know stick and they'll move along with it i hate to see herbalism and alchemy you know mm -hmm. fade yeah I, and that would just be tragedy yeah, I think there's more and more people who are interested in that, but I agree. I think the younger generation, I hopefully, you know, and I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I'm friends with a lot of people who are into that kind of thing and they like to <clears throat> forage in their own areas and that kind of thing. Yes. So I think it, I think it will continue and I think that'll continue to grow. I think that's something that will always be part of who we are and you know whether they realize it as kids but i think as adults or as they get older they're going to realize hey just like you dad yeah. you know mom's not around forever and you know yeah. while mom's here yeah. i want to learn as much as i can hands on from her Definitely. and you know carry that forward but i still think that your mom was with you when you were doing all of that so 
Oh yeah. I think so too. I mean, you know, I wish, like I said before, if I would have picked her brain a little more, but Mm -hmm. you know, you don't think about that. You don't think about, you know, one day she's going to be gone. I mean, she was 68. She was very young Mm -hmm. to me, you know, to pass away like that. And it's so suddenly without any notice or warning. Um, so hindsight, Yep. You wish you would have, you know, but you work with what you got now. And I just wish you would have wrote, wrote directions. Okay. Let's just- right. <laughs> <laughs> Mental note. Know. Hey mom, next time around, right. could you do this? Right. You know, come on. Right. You know. Yeah. So Tina Marie says, I want to try fried squash blossoms this year or oh squash my gosh. blooms. Yes. I bet yeah. those are, I have heard they taste so wonderful and you can actually, yeah, I haven't done that either. Those, yeah. You know, you don't have to necessarily fry those. That's the nice thing about those. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're, I hear they're wonderful. I've yeah. not tried them yet, but I would like to. Yeah, I would too. Now I know in our herbalism class, I know she actually talked about, Juliet talked about um, making those. And yeah. I think there's a recipe in um, whatever book we have. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that book is over there. One of those books that we have. Yeah. <laughs> I come I think across it's, that it's, we will share that with her because um, yeah absolutely yeah yeah and that's the other thing too you know you have um oil infusions you can do with herbs and then you also have tinctures which yeah the tinctures are done with alcohol so mm-hmm. if you're somebody who does not like alcohol or can have alcohol then a tincture is not the way to go for you um more of a fresh herb dried herb something like that would be better but some of these herbs need that alcohol to draw out the Mm -hmm. elements that you're wanting to draw out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something that people can keep in mind and you only need drops of it versus, you know, say a tea ball of herbs for, you know, however many cups of tea you're wanting to do. Right. Uh, Now, I think you do Terry's a certain way, correct? I do. So I, he is hooked on echinacea and elderberry. Um, when he's not feeling very well, when the sinuses are going on or the throat is scratchy. So um, I make him up, he has a thermos and I make him up uh, echinacea and elderberry with raw honey. And he takes that to work with him whenever he's feeling a little blah, we'll mm-hmm. run that for about four to four to seven days. And then you just take a break from it because uh, your body needs to know that you're not fixing everything for it, you know, that it needs to do some work on its own. Mm -hmm. So you'll do that echinacea and elderberry for about four to seven days. Then you take a break for the same amount of time. And then if it's still kind of funky, you can, you know, start another round of it. But Mm -hmm. most typically you do it for about that long, you start feeling some symptoms relief and, you know, feeling pretty much better. Mm -hmm. So knock on wood, Ever since all of this has happened, neither one of us has got sick because we've just been maintaining and staying right. on our immune system. So right. that's good. And Tina yeah. Marie said a light beer batter, lightly dipped. Oh yeah. 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 That sounds yummy. That sounds close to what I'd done with dandelion blooms before. Uh-huh. So I bet that would be good. Yeah. 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 I thought about doing that last year and then for whatever reason, I um, didn't have that great success with, um, with some of my items, but I was trying those in, um, instead of a raised bed, I actually tried those in a, like a huge pot and they didn't do so well in a pot. So, you hmm. know, we're going to go back to figuring out <clears throat> yeah some type of raised bed. And I've got a, I've actually got to figure out that configuration. So yeah, we'll be talking messy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking. It's like, I got to figure well, out where I- to put these. I mean, I have my, my strawberries already, out there and they're in a good spot and um they come out you know they i do they do great every year they never make it into the house because i eat all of them before they can make it into the house i'm right you know strawberries isn't something that you will you should never ever send me into a strawberry picking patch because um the strawberries will never make it out of the field right you, you see all these all this pink <laughs> on your lips ah uh, we know what jen has been doing yeah. yes yeah. i might as well just pay you for the quart or gallon or whatever it is right. and have you to pick it or just i'll pay you that and i'll go in there and eat that amount <laughs> right there you go 
yeah, literally, that's, yeah. that's literally how it does. I mean, Steve always says, I've not yet got one of those strawberries. And it's like, well, you have to go outside because right. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to make it in the house. That's right. You have to walk out of the office, out the back, go get yep. those. Yeah. And that's what I do. Literally, like every morning when I go outside, that's, you, you know, go I searching go to see if a new one's out. I do. I do. I literally do. I go out there every single day and I'm looking for the new strawberries and I'm eating those as I'm finding them. It's like, I don't need them washed. I don't need to do anything. You no. know, I'm just picking those oh things gosh. up and eating those. Yeah. Right. I don't know how many tomatoes I've picked out of the garden and just ate, like, you know, wipe it off on the sleeve or whatever and just eat it. It's like, yeah, yeah those are the best, you yeah, know, it's like, yeah, veggies Strawberry right out of the garden. Right. Although, exactly. Although I'm glad I didn't do the green peppers. The year too, <laughs> right? Thanks for learning that lesson. Yeah. For Thanks experience. for learning that one for me, honey. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, I learned that I, lesson too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad I didn't partake in that. Right. Yeah. 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 We got to learn, we got to learn secondhand how that works instead of right. First. Yes. So yes. yes. One not to repeat ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, he says, How about mushrooms next? Next time. Yeah, we can talk mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. We can do that. Um, um your uh Oh, so echinacea makes her asthma worse. She found out the hard way, but elderberry, yum. Tina Marie, this is Tina Marie who said that. So if el elderberry does that, you might try a mild golden seal. Well, it's echinacea your... that actually does that. The elderberry she likes, it, it's the echinacea that she can't have. So more than likely the echinacea bloom is the one that aggravates her, you know, yeah. her allergies. That's what she now, said. If she tried echinacea leaf, it might not do that mm -hmm. um, because you don't have the pollen. That pollen still, you know, can possibly be in those blooms, even though they're dried, mm -hmm. you know, so that could be possibly what's aggravating her allergy. So if she's tried both the blooms and the leaves and they both aggravate, then um, try to switch to something else that does similar benefits, such as, you know, golden seal or, Absolutely. you know, something like that. And still use the elderberry with it because they're going to complement each other. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. But yeah, that might help. She has asthma. So yeah. um, that might help her with that. So, but yeah, that's something to really think about. Yeah. So, so now it depends on whether or not she had the echinacea blooms uh -huh. or if she had the leaves, whether or not it aggravated. Mm -hmm. So something yeah. to look into. Yeah. Yeah. So what's yep. next for Missy? So we're working on finishing my building out here so that maybe some local folks or those that want to come in from out of state and visit um, can actually come to our, my building here on our property and see our products and we can work one on one with each other. It's fine to work with somebody you and I have run into this. Um, where we're, I worked on an oil blend for you. It's better to have you here to have you smell it and work on that blend than me trying to zoom with you or talk to you on the phone and figure out a blend for you. Cause what I think might work, your nose may go, Oh, nay, nay, that is mm -hmm. not and, you <laughs> or know, your head will, you know, it may trigger a headache or whatever yeah. this may be. But I also think it's, it's um, what you put on your skin too, because everybody's body chemistry yes. is different. So Definitely. what smells great in a bottle yes. may not, it may not blend well with your skin and exactly. it may take on a totally different smell. Yes. And I think that's really important um, I know when we were in um, the Bahamas, we actually went to the perfume factory where we could create our own perfume blend. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we didn't get to stay and see it all the way through. And so what we ended up getting was not something that because they added some things to it after we left, even though we weren't aware of that. And it kind of just, you know, made that impossible to wear. Right. I'm, I'm very sensitive to different scents and everything else. I think that's a reason, right. that's a reason why I like the, the one, um, the plum sugar fairy yes. lotion, yeah. um, because I can wear that. It's not a heavy perfume. No. And so, you know, it that's something. Like it, it smells like candy to me, but yeah. when you smelled it, 
you had a different, you smelled some different aspects to it than I did. Absolutely. So, yeah, you and, know. and even wearing that on the skin, you know, more importantly, yeah. you know, you're smelling it and it smells great. But when you put that on your skin and your body temperature heats up, right. that's the real test of whether you can wear that or no, you can't wear that. Right. You know, and that's exactly. the same way with essential oils, you know, once it, it, it heats up with your body, you, you know, right away. So yeah, exactly. I agree. It's very yeah. important that you have somebody in your chair in front of you where you can, you yeah. Know, say, hey, try a little bit on your skin, wait a few minutes and then see how that's going to work. You yes. know, is that going to work for you? Is it not going to work for you? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, yep. so yeah, that's, to- what, that's what I'm working on is the getting the bu- building finished. Hopefully next weekend, um, this coming weekend, Uh um, Matt is coming over and we're going to work on the insulation in the ceiling and getting put in. And, um, so hopefully we'll be able to start moving the cabinets around and figuring out my countertop. And I know I'm excited. So we will have, um, I want to set it up basically as a mini store in the sense of when I have a client or a customer come in and we're going over different stuff because I'm going to ask you, you know, about medicines that you're taking because we want to make sure there's no reactions. I'm going to talk to you about, you know, different physiologies that's going on with you, you know, migraines or, you know, whatever. And so we want to talk about all this stuff, but I want to be able to reach for a product and say mm-hmm. that this is what I suggest trying for however many days, mm-hmm. you know. And, and let's see how this works. Take a few minutes, try some now type Mm -hmm. thing while we're going over this, you Mm -hmm. know, and if we notice a reaction or of any sorts, or maybe the smell isn't quite what's going on, then let's adjust it before you leave, Mm -hmm. you know, and then go from there. Just like, um, medications our doctors give us, you know, Mm -hmm we're going to try this for so many days. You have to think of herbalism is not exact. Okay. Your body is different than my body versus my brother's body versus my daughter's body. We all are going to react differently, you know, Mm -hmm. to what it is that we try and take. For instance, you know, Tina Marie talking about, you know, echinacea, I can take that stuff all day and it Uh doesn't bother me, but somebody who has asthma may not be able to do that. She's going to try golden seal, by the way. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a little bitter. So Mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Um, But with the elderberry that will help tame down that bitterness. And if she needs to add a little orange, orange to it or some lemon, if she doesn't mind that. So, Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so because it's not exact, and dosage can vary too with individuals. Um, a person who enters into working with herbs and medications and everything else needs to have patience. Mm-hmm. It's not a quick fix overnight. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to help you lose 50 pounds in 30 days, you know, type thing. It's mm-hmm. going to take a little time. And your body's going to adjust to things and work with whatever it is that you're doing. So our bodies are pretty smart. We just need to, we need to sometimes remind ourselves of that um, and give it a chance to do what it needs to do. Absolutely. You know, um, our body always knows how to heal itself. So, you know, the herbs are just, uh, you know, something that can kind of help that along too. But when it comes to creating an oil blend, how many oils do you suggest a person uses? I mean, because you don't want to take, well, I want to use 10 different 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 oils and blend those together. I mean, that would be a little much. So how how many would you suggest? So, I typically tell people to start with one. And the reason why I do that is because you're going to find the one that you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the one that triggers our brains. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, For instance, 
I was talking to a friend of mine who has children and I said, what is a favorite scent of your kids that just totally makes them happy? Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then look for a cocoa oil. Okay. Which there are, um, and, um, find, find that scent to, as your base. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's, what's going to trigger the brain to be happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you add anything to that, only add one at Mm -hmm. a time. Mm -hmm. I don't suggest more than three. And the reason Mm -hmm. why is because that's too much Mm -hmm. for um, our senses to try to grasp all at once. Mm -hmm. That's why some of these real difficult perfumes, you know, somebody will smell it right off the bat. They get a headache, you know, it's (laughs) it's too much, it's like too much all at once. Yeah. So for me, a scent that makes me happy, maybe that's where Gavin gets it from is I like citrus. Like I like orange. I like lemon. I like lime. Those are happy scents to me. So I can build off of that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I like rosemary and lime. Mm -hmm. I think it has a wonderful smell because rosemary has a tint of mint. Right. And so that mint and lime, I like together. Kind of reminds me of a mojito, but that's a whole nother subject. Right. <laughs> but right? right. I know. It's like right. now you've got my little brain going like, oh, we can think of ice cream. We can right? think- exactly. <laughs> it's like, stop it, Missy. <laughs> yes. So you find that one scent that is that triggers a memory yeah. or a happy, right? And then you can build off of that. Mm-hmm. Um so a friend of mine loves vanilla, but another friend of mine can't stand vanilla. Mm-hmm. Okay. So her happy scent is vanilla. And the reason why it's happy is because it triggers a happy thought that happened in childhood, mm-hmm. you know, homemade vanilla ice cream with the family. And she remembers smelling all of that. So the ice cream again. Right. I know. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> you look for that one happy scent to start with, to build off of. Yeah. So I was just making sure we didn't have any more questions over here. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you know, I know there's some people who who want to add, well, they like a bunch of scents and so they want to add them together. And it's like, you I think that can be an overload. And the other thing too is, you know, some people get oils and there are certain oils that you need a carrier with. Like you oh, exactly. just yes. use them straight on your skin because you know, yep. it can, you can cause, cause rashes. You can cause all kinds of irritations. Yeah. Just, yeah. I know some people that have had a re- allergic reaction, not even knowing they were allergic and they got a blister from it. I mm-hmm. mean, that's not something you mess with. No, really. no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and you have to be with... careful, you mm-hmm. know, because there are certain oils that are made for our diffusers. And then you right. have other oils that are made for the skin. And there is a difference in those. And I, I think sometimes, and not, not so much. I mean, sometimes people don't think about that. They think they yeah. can substitute, you know, one or the other and you really can't You so you really yeah. need to be careful of what you're doing and make sure that you're using the right product. And I mean, there's a lot of different carrier oils out there. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, definitely. you've got your grapeseed oil, you've got, yeah. you know, yes. um, coconut oil, yes. you've got, um, sunflower oil, you've yeah. got, you know, all kinds of different ones you can use as a carrier. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we get into, you know, I ask basic questions. If you tell me you have a nut allergy, we're not using coconut oil. We're not, that's one we're not going to use. So, you know, you have to be smart about your oils. Like you said, you know, there's so many of them out there that Mm -hmm. um, they just say essential oil. Mm -hmm. Turn that around. Mm -hmm. Look for that carrier in there before mm-hmm. you ever apply it to your skin Absolutely. because without that carrier you could hurt yourself yeah Not- and the other thing too is you know depending on where you buy your oils from you know one can smell you can get the same oil from two different companies and <laughs> one smell really great and you look at the other one they're like that's supposed to smell like that right no. right you yeah. know it's like no right so, you know, you shop around, ask around, don't be afraid to ask people yeah. where they get their oils and stuff. And 
don't before you go you know and buy a bunch of oils from one company buy one or two that you're kind of interested in and smell those see how they see how they smell see how they work Definitely. and then if you're not happy with that company then find a different company you know? right right um you know yep. so now i know that at some point <laughs> and I know Missy and I have talked about this many times before. At some point, Missy and I will be teaching a um, herbal course, yes. a one-on-one um, herbal that course. Is- so that's something that we will be talking about for the future too. But I know we've talked about it for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a few years now. With so, so much stuff on our plates, it's kind of like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So at some point, you know, yes. we'll be doing that too. Yeah. But um, yes. so where can everybody get in touch with you? Give them the details. So we have our Facebook page. We have our Amarantha Mercantile on Facebook. Um, also our Etsy is listed on our, on our page. And once we get um, Amethyst Way up and going, it's, it's still in development. Um, that's where I'm going to refer clients and customers to, to definitely just connect with others, you know, to share information and, and that type of thing, because information is key. Mm -hmm. Information is knowledge, you know, Mm -hmm. and the more knowledge we have about the stuff, the better we can, you know, take control of our own healthcare. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So be sure to check all of those places out. Um, and again, you know, she does ship um, throughout the U.S. Um, I don't think she ships outside of the United States, though. Not um, right now. No. Nope. And um, so definitely check her page out, like her page, share a page. And if you're interested in any of her products, you know, send her a message and she can tell you all about the prices and all of that good stuff and um yeah so i think that's where we're where we're gonna call it for the night um but i want to thank everyone for being here (laughs) what (laughs) so considering we're almost two hours in right well it only seems like an hour but okay (laughs) um (laughs) i want to thank everyone for being part of this and um, I also want to thank Missy for coming on and being part of the show. I've had a really great time talking about herbs and stuff. It's something that this is the first time that we've actually talked about herbs and everything else in a public forum. So yeah. um, I've had a really good time doing that. And maybe we'll make this a um, regular thing and we'll do this, you know, maybe once a month or every other month or however. We'll see how our schedules go. But um, I think there's a lot of things that we could. Um, you know, teach a lot of people when it comes to herbs and stuff. So definitely we will um, revisit this again. And um, thank you, everyone. Everyone is saying it's a, it's, it was a great show. So um, oh, well, good. I'm glad yeah. everybody enjoyed it. I appreciate you having us on here. You know? Oh, no problem. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a lot of fun. And um, so next week, let's, let's go through the next week stuff here. Okay. On Monday, we start out with Psychics Unite meeting. That is 630 Central, 730 Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget in Indiana, we've changed our clocks, unfortunately. So um, there is that. And then on Tuesday, we have Devin Evans on Shadowhunters paranormal investigations and events at seven eastern standard time or seven central and also illuminating the paranormal tina marie has a show that's on tuesdays um illuminating the paranormal and tina marie is that at eight eastern standard time um on your show and it's para x i do believe it's on para x and i do believe it's at eight o'clock it's from eight to nine and she has an amazing show. I, I love her shows. She had just has this, she has the radio voice. Let me tell you, she has the radio voice. So Good. her show is on Tuesdays as well. On Wednesdays is Scotty Rourke and it's the Scotty Rourke show. And again, it's at seven central. Um, and then on Thursday we have, 
Sharon with her Oracle card readings on Thursday. And we also have Carly the Medium on her page who does um, different topics. And she's kind of changed up her format a little bit. She's going to be doing, she's going to pull a card, some cards at the end for like a feel of what the week's coming up, but she's going to be talking about different things. And um, I'm not sure what her new topic is going to be about next week. So looking forward to that. And then on Friday, we have Greg's show, um, which is called the shadow hour. And that is again at seven o'clock um, central on shadow hunters, paranormal investigations and events. And then back here on Sunday, with my show and next week i've decided that i am going to start the astrology right away we're going to go through the zodiac signs and i think that'll be really fun to kind of get to know the personalities of all the signs and everything else and then the following week we will go into another aspect of, ast of astrology so but again make sure that you check out missy's page um, on facebook her etsy shop and if you have any other questions or want to order from her send her a message and she will take care of all of the orders. So with that said, I'm going to wish you all a good night and I'll good see night. you next week with a new show. So.